I want to take a look at estimating the uh, gravitational power emission from a uh, pair of pulsars that are orbiting one another. So for the example, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the Hulse-Taylor binary pulsars gravitational power emission. So here, here's a rough sketch of the two pulsars. The Earth is 21,000 light years away. They're orbiting one another with a period of about 7.75 hours. And one of the pulsars, the way it's rotating, uh, its emission axis is pointing towards the Earth. So the pulses from that pulsar can be seen on Earth. The other one has a different orientation. The uh, size of the semi-major axis is 2 million kilometers, approximately 2 million kilometers. But the number that we need here to uh, get an idea of what the gravitational uh, power emission is in terms of gravitational waves is how the orbit is shrinking. The two pulsars are spiraling into uh, one another. And the change in the semi-major axis in one year is roughly three meters. And the masses of one of the pulsars well, the masses of the two pulsars are equal, so we can have the mass of pulsar 1, mass of pulsar 2. They're equal, and they're approximately equal to the mass of 1.4 suns, and so you can convert the 1.4 suns to kilograms. We'll need that number later. The discovery by Hulse and Taylor of these orbiting pulsars won them the Nobel Prize in 1993. And what we're going to do here is an approximate, and I want to highlight, approximate estimate of the gravitational waves in terms of of what's carried away by gravitational waves. So what we could do, again, in an approximate sense, we'll say that the, p the potential energy of this system is uh, the gravitational constant times the mass of pulsar 1 times the mass of pulsar 2. And that's divided by the uh, distance between them, which is the uh, we're calling it the semi-major axis. Now the pulse, pulsars are spiraling in towards one another. So th this distance is changing. So we can think of the derivative of the potential energy with respect to the semi-major axis. And that would be equal to the same uh, numerator, mass of pulsar 1, mass of pulsar 2, divided by r squared, representing the semi-major axis. Now we can uh, think of this in terms of, of um, of delta, so the delta for the potential energy then would be equal to all of this pulsar 1 times the mass of pulsar 2 all over r squared, semi major axis, times the uh, change in the semi-major axis. And what we know is that we can, we can say in one year that's what ha that's the change in the potential energy 
if we let this equal to be the three millimeter three meters change uh, per year but what we want to do is get to a power so the the total power that we can think of as being emitted in terms of a gravitational wave would be equal to um, this change in the potential energy over a year. That, of course, is in units of joules. And then if we divide by time of one year, we can find out what the total power is that's generated. So if we substitute in these numbers, and what we need is uh, uh, the time for the one year, of course, is uh, if we convert that to, to seconds, we've got 365 days per year and one day has 24 hours and one hour has 60 minutes and one minute has 60 seconds so we convert the one year to uh, uh, to uh, seconds and we have the masses over here all we need is the gravitational constant and the gravitational constant is 6.6262 times 10 to the minus 11th see I think that's right and the units on that are meter cubed per second squared kilogram so if we substitute these numbers in, we have the masses, we have the gravitational constant, we have the value for the semi-major axis, we have the change in the semi-major axis, we substitute that all in here and then divide by the time, we'll find the power. That we're assuming is being emitted in terms of gravitational waves. So if you work all those numbers out, you get roughly 1.2 times 10. We're dividing joules by second, so that we're going to have watts now. Watts. 1.2 times, actually it's 25. 1.2 times 10 to the 25 watts. And just as com for comparison, the total power being used on the earth at one time uh, you know by the burning of fuels generation of electricity and all that is roughly two times 10 to the 12 watts and uh, the famous Z machine that puts out uh, for a very short time the power that it puts out is uh, something like 3.8 times 10 to the 14 watts. No, I'm sorry, that's 1.2 times 10 to the 14th watts. And if you look at the sun, it puts out, uh, that's where the 3.8 is. 0.8 times 10 to the 26th watts. So in comparison, the gravitational energy that's being, the gravitational wave energy that's being emitted by the pulsars orbiting one another with the orbit decaying three minutes is producing 1.2 times 10 to the 25 watts. And I want to emphasize this is an approximate calculation and we only looked at this in terms of the potential energy and uh, 
maybe at some future date we'll include the potential energy plus the kinetic energy plus the potential energy plus maybe some other thoughts. But roughly speaking, because the orbit is decaying at three meters per year, the uh, power emitted by the binary pair of pulsars is 1.2 times 10 to the 25 watts. I don't see any errors offhand here, but in the event any are found in the text associated with the video, I'll put an errata. Okay.